<laughs> now, our special guest today knows all about that sense of responsibility. She's a country girl from Narandra. Uh, she's maintained a profound connection to the land through all those years. The first thing she remembers is a giant gum tree outside her window. And she still has an incredible fondness for these marvellous eucalypts today that are surrounding us in the Botanic Gardens. Please welcome our esteemed guest, former Governor of New South Wales, Professor the Honourable Dame Mari Bashir. Realistic, not maudlin, <laughs> and especially my Ingram sisters, because they were born on Wiradjuri land and a Wiradjuri, have Wiradjuri heritage. I was born on Wiradjuri land too in Moranbra, and amongst my greatest memories of growing up with those Aboriginal children there, and it was a great, great source of joy to me, Neil, many years later. Uh, when I attended uh, the reunion at Kudamundra Girls' Home, where um, those responsible asked for forgiveness, uh, there was an architect there who actually had researched the Aboriginal settlements in Eastern Australia. And he said the one town where Aboriginal people were respected, in fact revered, treated as one as equals, and had full employment was that town in which I was born and grew up. So I realised that I had that blessing, that very special blessing, of the longest living culture and civilisation on the planet, and that has been with me wherever I go. So I want to pay my deep respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora land upon which we have gathered, and I'm sure they will be looking very fondly at this because we've gathered about protecting the land from degradation and from the production of food, which of course was foremost in the minds of our Aboriginal people. And I have to share with you one of the most dramatic memories that I have during my period as Governor. Uh, I was rather in awe of this special visitor who was coming, number five in the hierarchy of the People's Republic of China. So naturally we were asked to entertain him and we put on a dinner. And this good man was sitting alongside of me and it just happened to be a very problematic week in fact when the, the gas and coal was being discovered in the South China Sea. Legally, it belonged to Vietnam. China, the People's Republic of China Navy came down to have a look. That was, yeah, but that was quite all right. They were all in the region. But then, for the first time since the Vietnam War had ended, overcame the American fleet to that uh, area. So it was looking as if it could be a tinderbox. So at this point in time, this gentleman arrived to be entertained in Sydney. So we were getting on very well during the dinner. And I said to him, sir, could I ask you a rather sensitive question? And if it's too sensitive, please just ignore it. And he said, go straight ahead, madam. <laughs> and I said, sir, what is China's greatest concern for security at this point in time, this week? He said, my God, madam, food. <laughs> food, arable land and food. I said, not the South China Sea. He said, no, that will resolve. He said, how are we? He said, the greatest problem facing the Chinese government is the question, how are we going to feed one quarter of the Earth's population when we have lost so many of our farmers and peasants to come and work, to come and walk, work in the great industrial sites and factories? Our economy is all very well. Perhaps the greatest, not even the second greatest in the world, he said but it has come at an enormous cost. 
you might all agree. But then he went on to say, that is why we are looking to Australia, New Zealand, and Southern Africa to buy up as much food producing land and again our food to feed one quarter of the Earth's population. So I will never forget that, that encounter which made me all the more sensitive and aware of the fact which horrifies me. I do have a weakness and a nasty side. <laughs> selling off of our land to foreign industry. Yeah. And Jerry Henderson said to me once, you know, the columnist from the Herald, oh, you're a protectionist, are you? I said, yes, I am. When it comes to Australian land, Australian farms, Australian products, I am. So we're in this incredible position where we can help to feed the world. And of course, what is the counter to that? Digging up precious farmland, precious farmland for coal. We can sink, we can sink a world for gas. <coughs> but for coal, when we're sort, we're expected to be leaving the burning of fossil fuels behind because of the environment. This is surely contradictory. Well, I feel, and since time immemorial, women's business with our beloved Aboriginal ancestor women, and from the days of the 26th of January when the convict women came ashore, it's been the women of this country who've moved the nation forward. And you know, during the wars, who ran the farms? Who were the land army? Yeah, women, are, Australian women don't think they are, but they are very, very modest. They get on and do the job. And this is a clarion call, I believe. I couldn't be more passionate about a cause than this one. We must do something to protect our food producing land. Yeah, yeah. And imagine the hunter, the hunter, the Western districts have been sold. Canada, Canada of all places, our colleague in the British Commonwealth came over to buy the whole of our wheat distribution industry and at the last minute those wonderful farmers who were, many of them were bankrupt, went in to vote. I was sitting up late at night, metaphorically biting my nails and wondering what would happen, what madness to sell the whole of our wheat distribution to any country. And those farmers, many of whom were in bankruptcy because of the five-year drought, were interviewed as they came out from the meeting. They said, when it came to the crunch, we voted one Australia. It doesn't matter what happens to us. So this gathering is wonderful. Australian women always get things done. You know that, don't you? Either by lobbying the men, whether they live under the same roof or they're in the same parliament. But I think this is one of the, I think this is one of the most important rallies, and I think we've all got to take this message to all whom we know. This is in 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 a sense, a crisis, a disguised though it is, but the sale of our farmland and the destruction of our farmland must stop. And that's my feeling and I've never been so emphatic or political in my life.